Let's do. Awesome. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and get started because it is 6.01, and I said I was starting this at 6 o'clock. So, Hank, can you drink later? Um, <laughs> so, what we're going to do, first of all, I just want to say thanks for everyone who's decided to join us tonight and take some time out of their Sunday evening instead of watching football, I'm assuming. There's a football game on. No, I don't know. No I don't idea. know about the sports. Um, but what, uh, first I'm going to break down a few things and then we're going to get into the recipe because tonight we are going to make a chicken shawarma wrap. Um, it's incredibly easy and it's more of an interpretation of a traditional, uh, shawarma dish, which I will explain to you exactly what shawarma is, is in just a moment. And then, um, today is the second Sunday of the month and Everything goes to plan, and if life doesn't get too much in the way, uh, the plan is to do this every second and fourth Sunday of the month. And then as we keep going and I kind of get a rhythm of everything, we'll do it more often. But I'll be posting everything um, this live on my Instagram uh, IGTV, so you'll be able to see it later. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask questions while we're going through the process. And then um, behind the camera is my husband, Obed. So he'll be monitoring uh, questions and comments so they won't go um, unattended or unnoticed while we're going through that. And then um, also this particular recipe, just so you guys know, is on my new ebook, Healthy Easy Meals. Uh, they're all, it's 14 recipes, uh, simple, easy recipes that are healthy for your family um, without sacrificing flavor. Um, they're all delicious. And then my big announcement, which I'm actually very excited about, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull this up here real quick, is that I have an official cookbook coming out July 21st of this year. If you know all the scheduling and planning and everything goes, you know, what's the word? Stays on track. And I just wanna show you guys real quick my, da, da, da. so the cookbook is, if you're wondering what it is, it's weeknight gourmet dinners. So that's my cover, which I'm very excited about. I took that picture. I just wanna let you guys know that I took that picture. And it is a collection of weeknight gourmet recipes. So it's uh, exciting, elevated meals made easy. So it'll be, you know, things like in the Instapot and the slow cooker and sheet pan recipes, but we'll be using things like miso and uh, za'atar and like all kinds of interesting uh, recipes and then like really traditional things like uh, beef bourguignon and um, a bolognese sauce. So I got like a little bit of everything and I even did desserts, which if you know me, desserts ain't my thing, but we're doing our, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to do desserts every once in a while. Now, let's get to what we're doing this evening. And if you, oh, oh, one more thing. The book is already on pre-order. So if you go to amazon.com and you look up weeknight gourmet dinners or my name, Miss Sadia Rivera, I will show up on amazon.com and you can pre-order. There isn't a cover yet. There isn't cover art on the Amazon page yet, but you can pre-order. So, okay, let me grab the chicken out of the refrigerator. And so what we're gonna be doing tonight is a very simple chicken shawarma wrap. Uh, let me get my skillet out. And chicken shawarma, I just like popped out like a, yep. like a little jack in the box, um, is traditionally, it's a Middle Eastern dish that is traditionally uh, done, we're probably all kind of familiar with the hero, um, which is the vertical, uh, roasting. So usually like a hero, you'll see where it looks, it's minced meat, usually lamb and spices, that sort of thing that are pressed into a cone shape and then put on a vertical spit and roasted that way. So chicken shawarma is done very similar, except it's usually chicken that's been marinated and then it's layered on a, on a large skewer and it's vertically roasted. But I don't have a vertical spit. So we're not vertical roasting uh, today. So we're doing an interpretation of the chicken shawarma using the inspiration of the spices and things that are used in the dish. 
So what we're going to start with first is that the goal here is to make this a light, easy, healthy meal. So I'm using chicken tenderloins. However, you can use chicken breast if you like. You can use um, chicken thighs if you like dark meat, which I love dark meat. So, um, but today we're just going to do these chicken tenderloins. Um, let me get my knife out. Let me get these tenderloins out of the packaging. Come on, let me get my tongs. Okay, so we're gonna put the tenderloins in a bowl here. And come on out, there you go. Trash that right there. And then we're going to do a little bit of olive oil on it. If you don't want to use olive oil, you can also use like an olive oil flavored cooking spray and save yourself um, a few calories on uh, the oil. So just give it a light drizzle. It doesn't need to be too much. So probably about a tablespoon. So, hey, I was just going to mention. Um, yeah. Missler Heather says hello from Maryland. Love your page. Hello. Thank you. And... Um, Art C. Ellen, I think Archie it's... C. Ellen, okay. says congrats on the house and she can't wait on the book. Oh, yay! Thank you! That's so sweet. I'm excited. I'm very excited that you're excited about the book. So, okay, so we have our chicken uh, tenderloins right there. And we're going to first start with some minced garlic. Here we go. So we're going to grab four cloves. There goes one clove line. Of minced garlic. Now, you can... Some, you know, there are some garlics that they already come pre-peeled. That's totally fine, you can do that. I prefer to get the garlic straight off the clove, um, just because I find that those garlics that are usually pre-peeled and that you keep in your refrigerator start to smell weird in your refrigerator. But I also have a very sensitive nose, so that could be part of it, I don't know. But we don't have to do anything, any kind of fancy dicing here. So if you just give it like a good smack, the skin will come right off, no problem. So just the flat end of your knife, smack it, and then it'll pop right out. There you go. I think no big deal. And we continue, we just do four of those cloves. And if you give it a good pound like that, once we go ahead and mince it, all we have to do is cut it up. You don't have to, it's, you know, we're gonna do a quick um, rub on the chicken breast. So we don't have to do anything that's like super, precise for this. So just give it a quick chop right there. Do another one. And then a few more just to get it nice and tiny. Oh, my notes, I just realized that those are your notes and my notes are over here. Let's put this right here so I can see. Okay. All right, so we got our garlic, mince that up. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this in with the chicken. I'd like to get it really finely minced. And then if you don't like to, you know, the knife, garlic gets kind of sticky as you mince it, um, you can just go ahead and take a bench scraper, scrape it off instead of using your fingers, and then continue on. Because then it's like, it drives me nuts when I get that real sticky residue on my hands. So we're gonna go ahead and... So Love from the Oven says she's always jealous of your knife skills. Oh, yeah, that's Christy. <laughs> hey, Christy. You too can have awesome knife skills. It just takes a little bit of practice. So it's a lot easier. Oh, the trick is, honestly, is to rock it, rock the knife, and a sharp knife. A dull knife is the worst thing to have. So we're gonna go ahead and add some salt. Recipe calls, let's double check this real quick. It says like a teaspoon of kosher salt. I mean, I cook, so I do an approximate. That's a teaspoon right there. It's a little bit more, there's nothing wrong with that. There we go. Teaspoon of kosher salt. And then we're gonna do a teaspoon of black pepper. I like to always do my black pepper from the pepper mill. So, which my pepper mill might be a little empty. Hold on. There we go. No, I think my pepper mill's a little empty. Uh-oh. 
Yep. Well, I'll fill that up later. So then we'll go ahead, and the pepper is not like do or die. If you don't have pepper, it's not the end of the world. So I'm not going to stress out about it right here. Um, the other spices that we're going to use are much more important than the black pepper. So, for example, we need some ground cumin. Um, and we do a teaspoon, no, two teaspoons of ground cumin. Cumin, cumin. So, and I'm a huge fan of this stuff. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite spices. So we'll do two teaspoons of that and you're just sprinkling it over top. Then we're gonna do two teaspoons of paprika. Um, I try not to do a smoked paprika on this. You just want like your standard paprika. Um, or anything that's too sweet. So, did you just, did you just see that? That yep. does yep. not function. Um, there we go. So don't, you don't want to do like anything that's too, um, too smoky because you can kind of taste that through the, uh, through the seasoning. All right, so we're gonna do two teaspoons of smoked paprika there. And this is gonna go back in. Let's see if I can do this without making too much of a mess. Oh, do we got a whiner at the door? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we're gonna do ground, a teaspoon of ground coriander. Um, coriander, if I, yeah, coriander is, um, if I'm not mistaken, it is the seeds of cilantro. So, because I believe in the, like in Europe and stuff like that, they call cilantro coriander. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a teaspoon of that. And if you have um, whole coriander, that's fine. Um, if you have a spice grinder, you can grind it up or you can crush it using a mortar and pestle. Um, all of these spices are spices that you, if you're unfamiliar with them, um, pretty much all of them. I can't think of a single one here that isn't at most grocery stores. Um, you don't have to go to a specialty grocery store, for example, for coriander. So Hungry Housewife says hi. Hi, Leslie! You know, we have been chatting on Instagram, what I feel like is forever, and we have yet to meet, and you're only like... 30 minutes from my in-laws house or something like that. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, now we're gonna move on to cinnamon. So we're gonna add a little bit of cinnamon. So all these are spices that you'll frequently find in a lot of Middle Eastern dishes. Uh, so we're gonna do half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then I think our last one. <coughs> oh, hey, you wanna let him out? Yep. Go ahead, we're gonna let the doggy out real quick. <laughs> And then we're going to go ahead and do uh, two oh, teaspoons oh. of turmeric. That's Buster, if you guys are familiar with him and you follow me on my Instagram stories. I'm sure you've seen him a few times. He is the, the yapper, the Mr. Opinionated. So we're going to do two teaspoons of the turmeric. And I think the only thing we have left is some onion powder. Oh, and crushed red, and red pepper flakes. So, oh my gosh, that just smells, it has such a strong smell to it. I love it. Okay, and yes, one and a half teaspoons of onion powder. You see there's a lot of spices in here. I don't believe in going like skimp on, on spices. And then for a little more heat, we're gonna go ahead and put in some red pepper flakes. So a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, which does not fit in there. So we're gonna go ahead and drop that in there. That's a lot. And I'm a little, I'm a little bit of a wimp, so I put a little bit back in. All right, so from here, and then we're gonna give this a little spitz of lemon juice. A little spitz. Oh, getting seeds in there. There you go. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and get this skillet starting to heat up on the stove top. And we're gonna go ahead and give this a quick mix here. So you just, put, all you need to do is mix everything up real quick. And get all the tenderloins really nice and coated. And it smells already, oh my gosh, this smells so good. All 
only school spices. Okay. So everything's really nicely coated. Let's tidy up here a little bit. We're getting this skillet heated. We have, let's talk about these pita bread a little bit while my skillet heats up. So I am a fan of, I'm not, like this is pocket pita bread, but I don't like the one that's like really stiff. Like there's some pocket pita breads that I find that are really stiff and they don't really have too much of a bend. These are also great with your New Year's resolutions if you're looking to make a healthier choice with um, your concerns about calories, carbs, that sort of thing. For example, here, one pita bread is 1.5 grams of fat, nine carbs, and six grams of protein. And they're delicious. They're like soft, they taste like pita bread. It doesn't taste like you're eating faux bread. So I highly recommend these Joseph um, Flax Oat Bran and Whole Wheat Pita Bread. And they come, they also have like minis, so another option that you can do here is once you cook these up, you can make it like an appetizer, toast up some minis with some yogurt and put this on top and it'd be awesome. So we got those right there. So let's go ahead and come over here and we're gonna start slowly cooking these up. Um, let me get a sheet pan to put them on as they cook up. So Hungry Housewives asking if you can find them at the regular, at the normal grocery store. I have seen them at Publix, and I know there's Publix where you're at, um, and you can also order them on Amazon. And they also have the lavish, lav, lav, lav. So your sister's on, and she's asking, is Obed recording? <laughs> well, yeah. no, I have the... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Obed is recording. <laughs> uh, Daddy <you> waved. <laughs> Hello, Deji. Um, Deji's my sister-in-law. Hi, girl. So let's get this nice and hot here. Uh -oh. I'll go get him. I'll go get the baby. Woo! Come on, handsome. <laughs> okay, back here. So we're gonna get this. And when you're heating up oil, thank you. Olive oil has a low smoke point. So you want to make sure that you don't heat it up too much where it starts to smoke. You'll start to kind of see the oil shimmer a little bit. Um, I know that I was heating up the skillet a little bit before I added the oil. I tend, I, it's better to add the oil in a cold skillet and let it heat up because if you get distracted and then drop the oil in a hot skillet, it can just smoke, smoke you out. So you have to kind of pay attention to that sort of thing. So... Uh, it's almost ready. You can give it like a little, you get a little, yeah, let's give it, oh, I have it too low. That would explain why. Why it's not there yet. Okay. So just so you know, um, Hank. I know he's, let me go ahead and grab a few other things that we're going to be using for this recipe. Uh, we're going to be using some mint and then some yogurt. And let me get this one out. Hey, can you take that ball somewhere else, please? Out. Thank you. So, um, Daddy just complimented your nice Jesus sandals socks combo. Thank you. <laughs> hey, you know, it's sometimes it's about the arch support, okay? Don't, you know, it, it is what it is. <laughs> Stay away from mine. Um, and we got a little bit of parsley, too. And then we're also going to use a red onion um, in a little bit. So... Let me get that off a little bit. Oh, there we go. This is ready now. Okay, turn that down a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and add, there you go. Nice little sizzle going. Dropping the tenderloins in. Now you wanna make sure when you're cooking, um, really anything, and if you want it to get, uh, you want it to brown and you want it to get some color, don't crowd your pan. Um, cause what's going to end up happening is that you're going to steam it cause you're not going to allow air to circulate. And also we might be tempted to mess with our food as it's cooking. Um, and it's just better. Oh man, I almost got all of them in here. Let me see if I make some, like, make some adjustments here, but it's better to let it 
sit so it can um, get its color. The more you kind of mess with it and stuff like that, you're just not letting it cook, so to speak. So we're gonna go ahead and let those sit there uh, three to four minutes aside. It's their chicken tenderloin, so they're not gonna take a long time to cook at all. So we're gonna give that a few minutes, and then we're gonna go ahead and start kind of, um, let me rinse off my knife. Get ourselves ready um, for dressing our uh, pitas. So go ahead and unwrap this real quick. Wait, what end am I on? There we go. So a lot of times when you're cutting it, like this onion, I already had it cut in half because I used a little bit earlier today. Cut the end and leave the root end attached. Uh, it makes it easier for when you're cutting your onion in a little bit so it doesn't start to fall apart while you're cutting it. Keep an eye on that. So we, it's red onion. Red onion can be a little bit strong, so I like to cut it pretty thin for this. So sometimes you don't even need the whole half onion. So I'm only, I'm, so it's basically gonna end up using a quarter of this onion, uh, cause I just like to give it a little bit, not, I mean, if you're really into onion, put all the onion you want on there. Don't talk to anybody a few minutes later. It's going to be like, it's going to be strong. So, sorry, I have a horse drinking water off in the corner over there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear him. So, we're going to go ahead and pull off some mint leaves and get them ready for our wraps. You don't need a whole lot, just a few. And usually, I put them out, I got maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got eight tenderloins there. Um, you can, depending on how hungry you are, you can do two to, uh, one to two tenderloins in a wrap, depending on the size of your pita. Um, so that should be good right there. So See Buster's that? in the shot, he looks stoned. He's just hoping something falls on the floor. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so much stoned as he is like hoping something falls on the floor. He does look a little hypnotized though, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so there's our mint, our onion. Um, let me show you a quick trick for cleaning off parsley or any kind of leafy green uh, or leafy herb. Let me double check this real quick. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and no, give that a few more seconds. Just wanted to make sure it wasn't... We'll turn them over in a little bit. Oh, let me give it a little bit again of lemon juice. There we go. Okay. So, if you have a very sharp knife, and if you have something like cilantro or parsley, like we have right here, instead of spending time pulling things off of it, now both cilantro and parsley, well, cilantro you can use as stems, parsley, Keep the stems to use them in stocks um, to give a little bit of flavor. But if you just take your knife and gently scrape it, you cut the leaves off, you see? And that way you're not like having to pick a ton of like little leaves off. And then if something comes off like that, then there you go. And you got a few parts of the leaves without all of the stems. If some of them pop out, then just rip them off and move along. So we got some parsley already here. You don't need a whole lot. Again, it's just um, a smidgen, just a sprinkle. And give it a quick little chop. If you don't want your, you know, leafy herbs to bruise, use a sharp knife. I'll probably say that like a dozen times. Use a sharp knife. A lot of kitchens, um, some people will have, they have dull knives. And those are dangerous and it's gonna bruise your food and it's just, it's, you're gonna lose a finger too in the process probably. So you, your sister says she needs to visit. She's boiling a hot dog. <laughs> you know, there is, I like my hot dogs in the microwave or on the grill. But I mean, if you want to boil them and do a dirty water dog, that's, that's up to you. <laughs> so we're ready here. Now we're going to go ahead and turn these. Look at this. Look at this. Everybody, I have, out. I have to walk through these guys. Out. Come out. on, guys. Scooch. Scoot. Okay. Give these a quick turn. We got all that crusty. Now, now that is not burnt. That is the the 
spices. They're all nice and toasted. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. I wish you guys could smell this. So. Let me adjust the heat there a little bit. Out. Deglaze the pan a little bit. All right. And that's only going to require another, yeah, like another two to three minutes or so. Okay. Ouch. I'm going to get the pitas out of the packaging. Okay. And I think, I mean, we're here at 26 minutes and I'm almost done with dinner. So. And like I said, this recipe is on, look, okay, look at this pita bread. Now, a lot of times you get a pita bread and it is, it's tough. And this, I love this stuff. And it's supposed to be pocket bread, but I like, I prefer to use it as a wrap. It's, it's just, it's very, very good. Can you show the label? Yeah, I'll show the label again. Joseph's Flax Oat Bran and Whole Wheat Pita Bread. And like I said, I mean, the carbs on this, nine nine for a pita and you can toast these up make them into chips um a great way to serve this if you don't want to do the pita bread you can make rice bowls with this with some chopped vegetables like tomatoes and onions and cucumber um you can cut these into wedges and toast them up and making me make kind of like a chicken shawarma nacho topping so like toast these up put the chicken diced on top of it with the onions and the herbs and everything like that and really any kind of cheese that you want to put on top of it. I would go with like a milder cheese, kind of like a mozzarella or something. Um, and just think of, of it as you can use this topped on a salad if you want to bypass the, the rice or the pita bread just in general. Um, really, you're, you have a lot of options. So if you want, you can go ahead and heat these quickly on the skillet on top, on, in on, in a dry skillet on the stove top, or you can throw them in the microwave for a few seconds, which is what I'm going to do just to kind of warm it up a little bit. I'm going to do a damp paper towel, kind of like how you would do tortillas, and then just lay it on top like that. I'm going to put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. And then I can tell that this is about done. There we go. Yeah, these are good. So if you give them like a good squeeze and they're firm, this one needs more time. That one looks about done. And there's nothing, you can use, of course, a food thermometer is your best bet. Um, that one's done. Just to double check, you wanna make sure it's cooked all the way through because it is chicken. So, and if you're in doubt, you can cut into it, but I'm not a huge fan of cutting into it because the juices will come out sometimes. But yeah, this one I think needs a little bit more time. Oh, that one's done. All right, so our peas are here. I'm gonna go ahead and set them aside where they're all nice and stay warm. And I'm gonna start pulling these. This one's done. That one's done. You can kind of tell, there's this trick with some, let me remember. Yeah. So if you touch your, your, is it here? Oh my gosh, I have to remember this from, I'm gonna have to look this, it up. This it is was, rare. This is like rare yeah. and this is well done. Yeah, so this is rare and this is well done. So here you go, medium, medium well, well done. And you just keep touching on here and you feel like and this is like raw. I think if you look up or if you Google like the hand meat doneness test, you'll probably be able to find it because that's what the internet is for anyway. That one's done. I can kind of, that one's taking a sweet time. Give that one a little bit more. That one's done. I'm just here, I'm just standing here squeezing chicken to see if it's done. You ever done that? Spend an evening squeezing chicken to see if it's done? <laughs> Almost there. And this is a great 
thing to do. You can do this early on in the week. Yeah, that one needs more time. Um, and have it as a meal prep. So you can throw it into your wraps. You can throw it on top of your salads. Um, and these ones are really taking their sweet time. All right, let's let those cook a little bit and we'll assemble one, out, one over here. So. That was close. What was close? Oh, you almost tripped over a dog? Almost wiped out. <laughs> so, okay, so you're gonna take a pita bread and it's nice, it's warm. You can do a little bit of yogurt, just plain yogurt. You don't want to sweeten yogurt because that would be weird. Take your yogurt. You don't need a whole lot. Just give it a little schmear. This is going to be your sauce. You can do, if you don't want to just do straight yogurt, you can do um, a, uh, a tzatziki sauce, which is the cucumber yogurt sauce. That's totally fine. So give that, actually, I think that would be delicious. Uh, set that aside right there. And then we'll go ahead and put a tenderloin in. We're just gonna do one right now. Um, oh, I just sent that flying, didn't I? Hold on, let me clean that up real quick. I don't like it getting on the outside of the... Okay, then we're gonna do a little bit of the parsley. A little bit of mint. and a little bit of red onion. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that other tenderloin in there. Why not? Another thing you can do if you want to, actually I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick, is you can grab a few tomatoes. I can smell that chicken is ready. Hold on, let me grab it. If I had a gas stove, I wouldn't have to worry about the heat. Okay, so look at the beautiful color on that chicken. Oh my gosh, it was, ugh. and it just smells so good. So we're gonna go ahead and you can um, dice a cherry tomato, put that on there. And also, I just remembered that I have some little baby cucumbers. So we can also add that on there. So we'll grab a cucumber. And I love these little baby cucumbers because they're like the perfect size um, for sandwiches like this or salads. And you don't have to worry about dis, um, like de-seeding them because um, they don't, they're not quite as waterlogged as full grown ones. So we're gonna throw a few of those in there for some crunch. And then that's it, you're all done. We have a beautiful chicken shawarma pita wrap with uh, yogurt, mint, uh, parsley, red onion, cucumber, and tomato. So, and then I'm gonna try and eat this thing without making a mess. See, perfect, look at that. It's almost like a hero. Seems like a hit mm. on the comments. Mm. Oh my God. I haven't made this in a while. It's really good. You want a bite? Uh, yes. <laughs> mm. Oh my goodness. Hold on. I don't know how people like gracefully eat on camera. I really don't understand how that works. So is this one in the book or no? This one is on the website. On the website. And it is also in the Healthy Meals cookbook. Which, by the way... <laughs> is that the ebook? So you can find the ebook on uh, thenoshery.com. And the ebook is $7, but if you guys use the promo code HEALTHY2020, you can get $2 off and get the ebook for 5 bucks. It has this recipe on it, it has some healthy turkey meatballs. It has a homemade roasted vegetable um, pasta sauce, freezer breakfast burritos with chorizo, uh, turkey chorizo, and how to make your own turkey chorizo, and sweet potato. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things on there. There is a, a pollo asado. Oh, 
His nose is on. You hear it? There's a pollasado uh, salad with uh, massaged kale. There's, uh, oh my gosh, I can't even remember, but there's 14 recipes total. And uh, this is one of them, and it's one of my favorites. So that is about it. Is there any questions going on right now? Uh, you may want to re recap announce, everything. No, the announcement. Say it again. Because it's a whole different group of people, the book. Oh, the announcement. I'm like, what are we announcing? Okay, I will announce. Let me tell you what's going on here. So we just made the chicken shawarma wraps, which were delicious, which are on the ebook. Remember, nashri.com, healthy2020. Also, if you're not on my email list, you should be because I give these little discounts and these little tidbits in the emails also with my weekly newsletter and these recipes. And most exciting of all that I'm going to announce again for all of those who are hanging out with us now is that I have a real grown up, like in your hands cookbook that will be coming out July 21st of this year. Um, it will be on amazon.com, on Barnes and Noble, at stores. It, it, it is on amazon.com. It is on amazon.com. That is correct. You see, this is why I have my husband here helping me out because I don't you, know what I'm doing. You can pre-order. You can pre-order. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go to amazon.com and you can pre-order. I'm going to show you my cover art, which with the yogurt on my keyboard. Hold on. Um, that will be the cookbook, Weeknight Gourmet Dinners, uh, Exciting Elevated Meals Made Easy. Uh, I'm so excited. So you can go to Amazon.com. It doesn't have the cover art yet because this is what they sent me. This is almost completely locked in, but not 100%, which is why they haven't released it yet on Amazon. But if it has that name and it has my name, it's the right book and you can pre-order today and you'll get that awesome cookbook in your hands um after uh july 21st so i'm really excited about this we have everything i got chicken recipes on there i got lamb i got beef i got uh desserts and a whole section on carbs like everything's like pasta galore some really fancy waffles and i even have a dessert chapter so um i'm very excited about it and trust me i'm gonna be talking about this stuff at the top of my lungs uh, for the next few months. So let me make sure I didn't forget anything. So we got my cookbook coming out July 21st of 2020, which is this year. I can't believe it's 2020 already. My ebook, which is on the nashri.com. There's a button up at the top that says ebooks. You can order it there. Use the promo code healthy2020 to get $2 off the ebook and come back and hang out with me again. Not next Sunday, but the following Sunday. Be quiet. Because <laughs> the plan is to do this every second and fourth Sunday of the month. Um, and maybe we'll do it more often as more people show up and uh, I become like a superstar. And uh, I think that's it, right? Okay, I'm so excited. This is a ton of... Oh, I was going to go through meal prep tips real quick. Should we do some meal prep tips real quick or? Save it for uh, next time. We'll save it for next time. Oh yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. So next time that's what we'll do. I do a meal prep every Sunday and I can show you how I prep, what I prep and how to make really quick meals in five to 10 minutes um, with this meal prep. So whether you're craving Mexican, Italian or some steak and mushrooms, kind of beef and mushrooms type of a dinner or lunch, I can show you how to make it um, all with one meal prep that takes you about an hour on a Sunday. So thanks so much. Make sure you visit uh, thenoshery.com. Tell people about this live and uh, how awesome I am and how cool everything is and how much fun you had and how delicious my food is. And I'm sure there's many other things that you can think of. And don't forget to sign up for my uh, newsletter so you can be up to date on what's going on and when the next live is. All right? We good? You ready to eat? I All am right. ready to eat. We're going to go eat. So thanks so much. Good night. <laughs>